All right, so this game started with e4, c5, the Sicilian defense, knight f3, e6. And we can already talk about this position a little bit. Typically, when black plays a Sicilian defense, we see this move, d6, and play can continue with d4. c takes d4, knight takes d4, knight f6, knight c3. And my goodness, that's a lot of arrows. I should have cleared this first. Uh, but this is a family of positions which we call an open Sicilian. And in this position, or in the open Sicilian is marked by the following features. We have knights in the center, and we have uh, the D pawn traded with the C pawn. And in this position, black essentially has four moves. We have a6, knight c6, e6, and g6. Now, of these four moves, three of them share a bit of a theme, and that is that regardless of whether you play a6, knight c6, or e6, this dark square bishop on f8 is a little bit slow to develop. And so black's middle game plan is going to be to find the right moment to play d5. And if black succeeds in this manner, then... Uh, it's said that black has equalized. Now, the odd one out is g6. If we play g6, we're going bishop g7, and there's gonna be tactics along this diagonal for black. And it's gonna be a very spicy game, and black might checkmate white, but also white might checkmate black. And, um, well, this is certainly worth investigation in a video of its own. In fact, I believe there is at least one famous dragon uh, in this book which we'll for sure see later. So e6 is a different idea. If we see the same sequence of moves from white, and then maybe like knight f6, knight c3, the difference is that this bishop can actually get out on the diagonal right away. Maybe we'll go to b4, maybe go to c5. Maybe there, if we go to b4, you know, maybe there's an issue on e4 with the pin. Bishop b4 right away is not a great move. In fact, knight f6 is not even considered best. Typically, we see knight c6 or a6. But the point is made that, you know, if the knight is coming out, you know, I've had this position a number of times in my own games, and if white isn't prepared to deal with this, it actually can be pretty tricky. Do note that there is no e5 pawn push in this position. I've had this as black actually more than once if the pawn is pushing to e5 we just win it with a fork but okay the idea is that black will get his bishop out faster but fisher does not play d4 fisher instead plays d3 which is signaling his intention to play what's called the king's indian attack setup where after knight c6 fisher is going to go g3 knight f6 bishop g2 and the point is to castle, bring the knight down and around, go up to the king side, launch the king side pawn, the h pawn. We're going to go knight g4, and if allowed, there are going to be sacrifice ideas against the black king. In the game, it was bishop e7, castles, castles, knight b to d2, following through with his plan. And here, Sherwin really should play d5. In this position, I have played d5 in the past where white can now play something like rook e1, rook e8, uh, maybe e5, a e5 is pretty common, knight d7, and uh, if white continues with his plan, knight f1, we could be seeing perhaps b5, h4, bishop f8, getting ready to defend the king, maybe uh, knight 1 to h2, we have a5, and the point is that black is seeking play on the queen side while uh, white is seeking play on the king side. Usually white gets there first, which we'll see from Fisher later on. Uh, but uh, if white, you know, tries to go about his plan willy nilly, he's not really thinking it through, then, you know, black can get into some trouble. Bishop f4, uh, perhaps uh, queen to c7. And then queen to d2, maybe move like a4 in this position. And if black willy-nilly sacrifices, the point is that 
let's see, after maybe something like Night F8, I, I just don't think black has enough. Or sorry, I don't think white has enough. Because we've defended mate, and we've defended F2. And if we assess this, or sorry, F7. And if we assess this position, black is actually much better. Um, the initial sacrifice is actually not like ludicrous. Um, here, white, I guess black should even play knight d4, trade off even more pieces. And the point is that black just doesn't, or white just doesn't have enough in this position. And uh, black has an issue with his pawns. So this, uh, this idea of the King's Indian attack, like sacrifice, has been neutralized. Of course, there are still chances for white. White doesn't have to sack in this position. But if you just kind of go about it without thinking, you will find yourself a piece down. And, uh, you know, without a mating attack, that might not be very good for you. <laughs> But instead, rook b8 was played, where Fisher writes, Sherwin slid the rook down here with his pinky, let me get rid of the engine, as if to emphasize the cunning of this mysterious move. Fisher gives this line, uh, d5, rook e1, b5, e5, knight d7, knight f1, b4, h4, a5, bishop f4, a4, a3 where this is following a game played in 1967 between Fischer and uh, Miag Masarin from the Seuss Interzonal in 1967, leading to double-edged play where Black's chances on the queen side countervail White's kingside attack. But usually White comes first. And the reason for that is pretty simple. The Black King is over here. The White King is not over here. So White is attacking the King and Black is attacking pawns and pieces. So, you know, which is the greater threat. But okay, rook b8 was played. Rook e1 and d6. You really should play d5 in this position. And once again, seek play on the queen side. Fisher says, okay, you have a modest setup. You're not really playing the way you're supposed to. I'm going to take advantage of this by taking more space in the center. b6, d4. Queen c7, and black is already in a bit of trouble in this position. Fisher writes that black should strive for counterplay by opening the c-file instead with c takes d4, c takes d4, d5, e5, knight d7, where Fisher assesses that this is an equal position. But instead it was queen c7. Fisher lashes out with e5. And after knight d5, there is actually a win here already for white. The line is very long, and Fisher did not spot this, unfortunately for us. Uh, however, Fisher had the win with c4. And after knight d to b4, e takes d6. Queen takes d6 is suggested by the engine. Where here we would play knight to e4, queen to d7, a3, knight a6, and the point is that now d5 is very strong. d5 is going to open the file for the rook. It's going to push the knight back to d8. And uh, this is going to just be a major problem for white, sorry, for black. d5, e takes d5, c takes d5, knight to d8, d6. And the bishop has nowhere good to go. Bishop f6, knight takes f6, g takes f6. And we can see that White's king is much safer than Black's king. Black's king has holes on h6, on f5. Um, white has this nice bishop staring at the entire board. Black has a knight on d8. Black has a rook on b8, which is not contributing anything to the position. Black has a knight on a6 that can't move. So this is just a total mess for Black. After rook g7, sorry, rook e7, queen g4 is suggested. Uh, where we can get the following line h3 queen h5 g4 queen g6 knight h4 queen to g7 d7 is a funny move exploiting the bishop after bishop b7 
Uh, well, the point was that if we play knight f5 now, then bishop takes. So first we cut off the bishop. Knight f5 now, queen g6, and bishop h6 will win material, and this is sufficient to win the game for white. However, Fisher didn't see all this, unfortunately. Instead, it was e takes d6, where Sherwin now plays bishop takes d6, and knight e4. And in this position, Sherwin has an unfortunate choice to make, which Fisher writes, uh, well, first, the, 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 the move played in the game was c4, where um, this is sort of a theme. I've loaded this position, or not loaded, I've set up this position on another board just for demonstration. This is a French defense. This is the advanced variation of a French defense. And here, uh, it's known that each side is basically going to play uh, like against the C pawn. And if white isn't careful, it can be very difficult to hang on to this pawn. Maybe C, D, C, D. Already a move like knight b4 is a little bit unpleasant to face if you're white. Uh, well, you might end up just losing this light square bishop, which is your best minor piece in the position. That's not the only sequence, though, that black can play. You can also play something like this. Bishop, e, bishop d7, bishop d3, knight g to e7. Note that there is this trick if you take on c5. But the point is that this, this c pawn is forever providing a source of play for black. And if white isn't careful, he, he might end up losing his pawn center. When you play c4, you're actually solving all of white's problems. And uh, black doesn't gain anything for this space advantage on the queen side. Because he's most likely going to castle on the, on the king side. And white can think of playing moves like queen c2 and then getting the pawn up to f5. He'll put his knight on f3. Maybe he'll even run the h-pawn. And the point is that these pawns aren't providing any sort of counterplay for black on the queen side. Because white's king is going to be over here. And most of this is honestly solid. So in the position, we say that you shouldn't push the pawn. And in positions like this, it's not just this position, you really need to think like, uh, is closing down the position beneficial to me? Most of the time it's not. Sometimes you should do it, but not here. But unfortunately for Sherwin, he didn't really have a great choice. Uh, Fisher writes, this is an unpleasant choice since it releases the pressure in the center and gives white a free hand to start operations on the king side. However, other moves lose material. Fisher first gives bishop e7, where now white plays c4. And after the knight moves, we have bishop f4. The knight on d5 was, of course, guarding the f4 square. And this is exploiting the very strangely placed rook on b8. We could, of course, also see c takes d4 first from black. And, you know, if you're thinking that, okay, now white takes on d4 and there's no more c4 knight f4, well, you would be wrong. We take the bishop first and we play c4 anyway. We just give up the pawn. Because after the knight moves, we get the skewer anyway. So it doesn't matter about the pawn. So c4 was played by black. Knight takes d6, queen takes d6. And when I was reviewing this game, I thought to myself, white should play queen c2. Because when his next move, knight g5 hits, there is a threat of checkmate. Uh, instead, Fisher played knight g5 right away. And I reason that this is because after something like h6, just kicking the knight out, maybe we can come back to h3, and we're going to go knight f4. And once the knights are traded, bishop f4 will once again skewer the rook and queen. However, h6 was not played. Instead, it was knight c to e7. Fisher played queen c2 now, threatening checkmate. And the point of knight c to e7 is revealed. Knight g6 stops the mate. However, this is, um, I, I call this a virtual pin. This knight can't move. This knight on g6. If this knight on g6 moves, it's, it's game over. It's checkmate and one. 
So this knight is effectively pinned. And uh, Fisher exploits this. He just runs that h-pawn up. Because if it were white's turn in this position, we would play h5 and the knight is toast. Uh, knight f6 by black, defending mate, or defending the h7 pawn. But Fisher crashes through with what Larry Evans describes as a thunderbolt. Pause the video, see if you can find the move. The move is knight takes h7. Because, well, if king takes h7, um, if king takes h7, we probably can just go bishop f4. And uh, there's a pin on the knight, so there's no knight takes f4. In the game, it was knight takes h7, and the point is revealed. h5, the knight has to move, and we're going to get bishop f4. Knight h4, bishop f4, finally. Queen d8. And now we don't get greedy. We don't take the rook right away. Because there is knight g2, king g2, bishop d7 check. And we will lose our bishop to a discovered attack. We will have a rook against two minor pieces. And black would be better in this position. We take the knight. And in this position, black saves his rook with rook b7. And the point is that he's going to get activity on the diagonal if we trade. First, h6. Well, we're still attacking the rook. And now we're threatening to soften up black's king even more. Queen takes h4 was played. We take on g7. We're still attacking the rook. And also now we're attacking the rook on f8. King takes g7, which Fisher describes as being suicidal. Uh, Fisher writes that the last hope for black would have been rook d8, uh, bishop g3, queen h6, and queen e2 is suggested. Though, of course, we may also just take the rook. In the game, it was king takes g7, rook e4. Well, first we defend our bishop, and we're setting up discovered attacks against the queen. Like, if it were white to move here, we would just play bishop f6 and win the queen. So queen h5 was played. Rook e3, discovering an attack against the b7 rook once again. And f5, a terrible move. Because in this position, like if we had played bishop f6, sorry, bishop e5, then pawn to f6 and it blocks out the bishop, we have to go back. And I'm sure that white is still winning this position. But, you know, for now, our, our plan was thwarted a little bit. But after rook e3, f5, now there is no uh, pawn to f6. First, rook h3, we give, an, we give a threat to the queen. Queen e8. Bishop e5, and there is a big problem brewing on h8 with the bishop and rook coordinating. Knight f6, stepping into a pin, but, you know, what else really was there? Queen d2. We're going to sneak in on the dark squares. We have h6 guarded by the rook, and also queen g5 threatening to win the knight. King to f7. Queen to g5. And the knight is once again virtually pinned. If this knight were to move which would be a terrible move, but this would be mate. So the knight is stuck. Queen e7, but it doesn't help. Pause the video, see if you can find the winning blow. The move is bishop takes f6, because after queen takes f6, rook h7, we're forcing the king away from the rook. Or, sorry, we're forcing the king away from the queen. King e8, and now queen takes f6. And if... Rook takes f6, we simply take on b7, and we are a rook up. Therefore, we win. In the game, it was rook takes h7, where now we have bishop c6 check, and uh, bishop d7 can be tried, but, you know, we're just going to exploit the pin with queen takes e6, king takes king to d8, bishop takes d7, rook takes d7, and the game is just over. We have a rook and... Uh, Sorry, we have a queen and black doesn't. And for Fisher, that's enough to win. Rook blocks is even worse. We exploit the pin once again. And then we even win this pawn. So, 
yeah, a very nice win by Fisher. Very nice demonstration of this King's Indian attack, which we will surely see more of.